Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the brand new series from the Future Hour, and this series is called "I Am Prosperity." The other day, I came across this beautiful and lovely book. It's called "You Too Can Be Prosperous" by Dr. Robert A. Russell. He was actually a minister from a church in Denver back in the days, who would now be recognized as New Thought philosophy teacher or advocate. The key takeaway in one short sentence of This video is to put rich idea to work and build for eternity. And be extremely aware of your thoughts, of your state, of consciousness. So we want to begin with two things. Number one is what is prosperity, and number two is why we didn't necessarily have prosperity in the past, right? So number one is that prosperity is not a matter of money or crypto. But a state of well-being, a means to greater freedom, increased livingness, and a fuller expression of life. These are the quotes from the book. It's absolutely beautiful. And the second part is why we didn't have them in the past. Another quote from the book: "It is futile to tell a man steeped in poverty that he can be prosperous, but to give him the idea of entering a new state of consciousness." Is to clarify for him the means of securing prosperity. Let's reflect upon that for a second. In the past, that we didn't believe something was possible. We didn't believe that we could close a deal with the clients, or even in life, we didn't believe that we could be good enough to go out with somebody that we really like. We didn't believe that we could have the dream job. But then, here the quote says that give him or her the idea of entering. A new state of consciousness is to clarify for him or her the means of securing prosperity. So actually, all comes down to the idea and the thoughts. And here he used stories from the Bible, right? That as long as Job thought about his troubles, his troubles grew. When he forgot his troubles and thought about God, his troubles flew. And then God or universe gave him twice as much as he had before. I think we all can relate with this, right? Which is on a day-to-day life when we were focusing on what was lacking, energy go towards that, and it seems that more and more lacking, more and more incidents comes. For example, when sometimes in the past we're worrying about the bills, and then one thing led to another, another events came up that you need to pay more, actually, in some other ways, right? And when we shift our consciousness to what we have, not only From the aspect of money, but what we have in life—a beautiful house, beautiful partner, maybe you have some pets. <sighs> Talk about beautiful cats. Actually, if you hear some background noise, because I'm looking at four cats right now. Or you live super close to the park or to the mountain. After a day of work or after a day of entrepreneurship, you get to go for a beautiful walk up to the mountain. These are things we are focusing on. That by focusing on these things and focus on what we have here in this moment. We tap into that higher level of consciousness, and this is why they said in you know, a lot of subtle videos, what subtle teacher talk about power of gratitude. The more grateful you are, the more abundance you track. That is,、um, in my opinion, quite first layer of thinking. Right today, we're diving quite deep here. There are many reasons why we failed to attract what we want from life. The chief causes of failure. Are our limited capacity and our expectations, right? He said here we ask for inferior things when we might just as well have the best. We're like the woman who play. We're like the woman who prayed that she might reach her uncle's bedside before he died, instead of praying that her uncle might be healed. Or the young man who prayed for part of his tuition. And got a third when he might prayed, and attracted a full scholarship. And I think the root cause of that is because the environment, the news, the media, the content we consume on a day-to-day basis. Do you read the newspaper? Do you watch too much show from Netflix, especially those reality dramas? What kind of content you are consuming on YouTube on a day-to-day basis? How about? On Instagram, do you feel that your sense of lack was enhanced by seeing someone posting a photo or a video on a boat or on a yacht or on a vacation in the south of Italy? Right. 
in the past, maybe we think, oh, they seem to have a better life because I'm not there. But now we can shift the level of consciousness by thinking, good for them, they're enjoying life. If they could do it, if one person could do it, then I could do it as well. And here I want you to take a second to share the story that changed my life and led to the path that I'm on today. When I was 21 years old in university in America, we had this opportunity being in this strategic investment group. It's a student organization slash class. You also get some credits because we're business majors. We get this opportunity, which is essentially once in a lifetime for me at the moment. You get to apply and there are about 21 students from our university, Washington College, to get to go to have lunch with Warren Buffett, like actually have lunch with him, which I believe other people pay for 500K or millions of dollars for that. And I applied and I got selected. We did a lunch Q&A with him and took photos with him. But what I remember so clearly is not exactly what he said to a particular question, but of this feeling of you finally met the legend himself. You finally met someone you've been looking up to for the longest time. Because I remember so clearly when I was three or four years old, my mom told me about him. In China, we called him the god of investment or the god of stock investment. 18 years later, comes in full circle. I'm standing in front of him and we're taking a photo together. We exchange one or a few sentences in that moment. But after that day, I stopped actually putting him on a pedestal. And so many things in our life is actually about not putting someone on the pedestal, have the courage within yourself to go about and do it. There's no harm in trying. There's no harm in going after what you want or exploring your capacity. Actually, by the way, I have a podcast dropping soon with Guru Ganesha. We also talk about not putting someone on a pedestal, but not in an egotistic way, but more so coming from understanding of he is just a human or your idol, she's just a human. Then if one person could do it, then I could do it too. And that was my biggest lesson from living six years in America. Also, I will add a photo here just uh, in case if you all want to see it. So coming back to the book, right? Where is the limitation in human supply? It is in humans' mental equivalence and in his or her lack of capacity to receive. He or she does not ask for the best because of your his or her own limitations. They tend to think that material things are more important than spiritual things or more important than level of consciousness and thereby shuts the best things out of their lives. Because money and material things means absolutely nothing until you, ladies and gentlemen, until you give them meaning, until you put them into work, until you share the salary abundance that you have whether it's taking someone you love your family out for dinner or hiring a new contractor and changing his or her life somewhere let abundance flow comes and goes and expands more right here really talking about fear and expansion right these are totally different level of energy of consciousness and you feel different i guarantee you if you really pause this video for a second here you close your eyes you think for a moment that when you are super super happy you are on a venture that's meeting new people trying out different things and go to events and in those moments you just feel different you feel more energetic and right and i guarantee you at least one time in your life when something like that happens that you run into opportunity you run into someone that take your life to the next level. I guarantee you. If you want, you can drop a comment here in this video to share your story. I would love to see that. And versus at one point in the past, maybe we were so focusing on us versus them. Maybe, oh, they got a new deal. They are raising X amount of millions for their startup. Why didn't I get that, right? And that's fear. That is just not coming from love. That is the ego is crying out loud. So be careful and keep in mind, always be in alignment. Here, this section is actually my favorite, right? Because it challenged me and I'm here by challenge you, dear listeners, to expand your consciousness, to be open-minded. Do you believe the universe? Do you believe that there's something much more, there's something bigger, whether it's called a Tao or God or universe? 
Do you believe in that? One is that the scientists actually show that with the research they conducted, there's only 31% of the cosmos are made out of matter, which is made out of stuff that we can touch, we can see. The notorious inventor, beloved inventor, Nikola Tesla, actually, he said that if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. For someone as accomplished, as smart as he was, he did not say that think in terms of your brain and your ego or, or your concept of self can do all things. He said, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. I think take 10,000 steps back that at least we can all be open-minded and agree that at least there's some kind of energy out there on this planet and in the cosmos. And essentially, we can tap into the energy of permanent prosperity and be well in that level of consciousness versus focus so much on humans doing, on the mental possessions. And subtleties here, even sometimes those kind of thinking come back, don't judge yourself. Just allow it to run through you. Just like Chinese food. <laughs> they hit you the way they're supposed to hit you and then let them go. You know, don't be attached to them. So here, we'd like to wrap it up this video with 10 things to remember when demonstrating prosperity. Number one, the mental process necessary to a greater income is a matter of recognition, acceptance, and most importantly, belief. This mental experience must precede any material manifestation. Thought first matters follows, which really ties back into the Nikola Tesla quote and everything we talk about today. It's more so something you feel. Don't really think. Supply, number two, supply is fundamentally an invisible thing. It is the receiving into your consciousness, the spirit of God, the spirit of universe, which created all things from the beginning and out of which all things are formed. Number three, the metaphysical method for demonstrating prosperity is to put rich ideas to work. Number four, poverty is a state of mind. We brought about this manifestation by our negative recognition, acceptance, and belief, which from now on, we are leaving all that behind. Those kind of thinking, fear, doubt, indecision no longer have power over us. We're letting them go. And by dropping that, we actually have more energy back into ourselves. We actually have more courage. We actually feel more motivated to go pursue your rich idea. Actually, let's just share four of them so that in the next video, we can share the rest of the six. Because I believe these four things or four tips to remember when demonstrating prosperity is already quite heavy. Wrap it up this video two things. Number one, stop counting your prosperity in terms of dollars, euros, or cryptos. Number two, true prosperity is not measured in terms of palaces, servants, cars, chauffeurs, fur coats, and road stays, and luxurious travels and jets, yachts, but in achievement, contentment, confidence, freedom, inspirations, beauty, gratitude, in a clear, conscious, abounding health and energy rich thoughts and deep awareness, in harmonious relations with others, love and devotion of friends, guidance in times of uncertainty, courage in the presence of fear, protection in the midst of danger, and peace of mind. And in the sense of joy that comes from the realization that universe is instant and unfailing supply. And Robert Russell actually mentioned about this word instant, right? The supply is available to you instantly. This naturally reminded me of this affirmation that Tony Robbins mentioned at one event I attended in LA. We're going to wrap it up with this. Make sure you subscribe, share this with a friend. I'm going to change the affirmation here a little bit for you, especially, okay? Universe wealth circulates in my life. It flows to me in avalanches of abundance. All my needs, desires, and goals are my instantaneously, for I am one with universe, and universe is everything. And you just see it and feel it, that your dreams fulfilled.
and just resting there peacefully. And day by day, you will see that your life starting to change. The miracles coming into your life. And don't forget to be generous, feeling grateful, and share your abundance with other people, with another being on your journey. With that said, this is Jazzy from Future Hour. See you at the next episode. I am Prosperity. Much love.